This is the Mark Podcast from Lifeway Women. We're your hosts, Elizabeth Heineman and Kelly King. Each episode, we'll talk about what God is doing, how He has and is marking each of us. Sometimes that will be through interviews, and sometimes we'll have conversations around the table. We're so glad you've joined us today. Hello and welcome to the Mark Podcast. I am Elizabeth Heineman and I'm here today with Kelly King. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Elizabeth. And I can't be, I can't be said the co-host anymore. It's really <laughs> sad. It's sad. I know. So this episode today, we are, this is Kelly's last episode as the Mark co-host. I am sure she will be back as a guest at some point, uh, maybe many times, but this is your last episode as a co-host. So we wanted to do something really fun that you don't know anything about. Um, So all of her reactions are real, (laughs) but it's going to be really fun. So we decided that to celebrate you and your time here on the Mark podcast, we would talk about some of our favorite Mark's podcast memories. So I'm going to go first with a fun one, and then I'll come back later with a a more serious one. But my fun one, and this has already happened. I need people to know, listeners to know, that this has already happened in the, like, 30-second minute before we started this episode. No matter where our guest was calling from and joining us from, Kelly would find a way to talk about Oklahoma and their history there. And I... It cracks me up every time because it yes. inevitably our guests would have some sort of history with Oklahoma. Who yeah. knew that Oklahoma had such a like vibrant population that all of these people are coming on the Mark podcast? Maybe you hey. just handpicked them. Did you handpick them behind the scenes? No, but everybody <laughs> goes through Oklahoma at some point in their life. And so it's definitely a central location and Great people come out of this great state. So, yes, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, It's true. And now you're back in Oklahoma. So tell people what you're doing now before we get – before we really get started. Sure. So I am at um, a great church, Quell Springs Baptist Church, and I'm serving as their women's minister. So it's been really a full circle moment. I – my husband and I actually got married here. I went here as a single adult in my 20s, and – you know, so I've had connections with this church for a long time. Never did we dream that we would be here and back here. But, um, yes, we love this church. Oklahoma, as everyone, like, if you've heard the podcast before, it is my home. And so uh, coming back here, and I get to practice all the things that I've been teaching for the yes. last, you know, several years. Yeah. Yeah. You are the expert, and now you're living it out. You're putting – um what is the saying? There's a saying about it. I, don't, I can't remember right now. But anyway, you're you're living it out. You're doing the thing. And we love to see you still supporting uh, Lifeway Women and a part of those events still and all of those things. And so um, Kelly is not leaving us, but she is joining the like front lines of ministry at Quell Springs. And so we're thankful for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to share some memories, like I said, but I'm going to have some people on to help me share these memories. So right. first, we're going to have Aaron on, Yay, and Aaron, Aaron is uh, the producer of the life of the Marked Podcast, the Life of Women Podcast. You've probably heard us talk to Aaron or say stuff about Aaron because Aaron does all of our show notes, which we love. So if you've ever clicked a link that we've talked about, Aaron is the one that has brought that on. She also was. Featured in our um, episode on our what was that called the uh, the conversations we're still talking about yes thank you and so we are now having Aaron on Aaron tell us so you produce some marked podcasts but you also do other things tell us what else you do here at Lifeway yeah so I joined the marked podcast team I think almost a year ago exactly oh wow Um, but I have worked at Lifeway for about four and a half years so I have had the opportunity work to work with Kelly. In a variety of ways uh, at some of our leadership events. And then in the past year, we've worked closely on the blog together as well. She writes some great leadership articles. You can go check out her Leading Well series. Mainly kind of managing our Life of Women content channels, the blog and the podcast. I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity to be on the podcast team because this year has just been so much fun getting to work closer with you. 
Yes. And we're very, very thankful for your Aaron. Cause like we were talking about before the podcast started, um, someone had the idea that we would have a, a podcast episode every week. I think that was, that idea came to someone uh, in the middle of COVID. It was, it was COVID. <laughs> we all did crazy things in COVID. And so for a little while I was producing and then we got another producer and then she moved to a different area and now Aaron is our producer and we are so thankful because that is a big job. And so we're very thankful for you, Aaron. Well, I'm yeah. glad to do it. It's such a fun team that we get to do it all together. Yes. It so, is such a fun team. And Aaron, you I, I I was really excited to see you guys your I mean, I know this is a future episode with Christy McClellan and I saw y'all recording that because you went to Israel together yes. and I was just like, I can't wait to hear it because I mean you guys have some great stories from there. So I'm looking forward to hearing that podcast. Yes. Way to tease that out, Kelly. I love that. Yeah. So always, it. always marketing, <laughs> Kelly. Um okay, so let's Aaron. How has working on a podcast with Kelly marked you in your walk with God? Yeah, well... Or what's a favorite memory? <laughs> that feels like a very <laughs> high-pressure question. So what's a favorite memory? <laughs> um, well, I can kind of answer both. I okay. mean, I think, Kelly, you just work so hard. Um, and that's just evident by how many different ways you've served at Lifeway. I mean, you've done leadership training, and you've worked with our magazine teams, and then you do the podcast as well. Um, and it's just so easy to see that you genuinely put your heart in whatever you're involved with. Um, and I think that's just because you want to see it do well and you want it to be successful. And so I think just what has marked me by working on the podcast with you is seeing your energy and enthusiasm for mm -hmm. like whatever is next. I love how you're always excited for uh, the next big idea, but I think that energy is infectious too, because I think it really just um, puts the guest at ease when they come on the show. Um, and they just have a fun time because you're just so uh, welcoming. Um, oh, but yes. I think as I was trying to think of my favorite memory that uh -huh. we've had together in the past year, uh, you know, I thought about all of our fun brainstorming meetings where we're um, thinking about which new guests to invite on or uh, just what topics listeners might like to hear, but it's really just some of the behind the scenes stuff that stands out to me. Um, I was thinking about how last September, I think it was a, you know, another full podcasting day when y'all had done like four interviews and then also the photo shoot for the new studio. Um, and then the three of us just decided we were going to go drive over to Brentwood Baptist and play pickleball for some yes. <laughs> <laughs> post-podcasting pickleball. So Elizabeth brought her net and we set it up because the church uh, parking lot has pickleball lines painted out there. Um, and Kelly has the cutest pickleball bag. I know. I she comes like a pro with yeah. all this equipment. Does your pickleball bag have your initials on it? It does. It it's, was a gift. It was a gift for one of our trainers from Courtney VZ. And so I love that it. was really, really fun. But, okay, I'm going to tell on myself because Aaron <laughs> is so sweet when we played pickleball because I don't know all the rules exactly. And we played the whole game wrong. Like I would hit the <laughs> ball like in the whatever, the, whatever the you kitchen. call it, the curtain. The kitchen. The, the, kitchen. Kitchen. the kitchen. I want to say the curtain, but I knew that was not the kitchen. And Erin didn't say a word till after it was all over. And she's like, I don't really think you're supposed to hit the – and I'm like, what? Erin <laughs> is like a pro. She said – she was like, I haven't played much. And then she's like, I'm in a tournament next weekend. And I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> no, and we were just having fun. Uh, we even – Elizabeth's parents had taught her like some game because it was the three of us at one yeah. point. So we were trying to do this like Round rotating <laughs> game where like when someone scored a point, you would like rotate around the court. Yes. So we were just out there having a blast. But, it was fun. Yeah. I promise, Aaron, I'm going to get better at pickleball. I have, a, I have a, you know, just a deep desire that I'm going to <laughs> actually learn all the rules and get better. Yeah. Well, we definitely need to play again. That yes. was so much fun. Yes. Um, we'll figure it out. But I really just say all of that to emphasize uh, how much of a team player you are both mm -hmm. on and off the court. Um, and so I think I was trying to think of the verse that comes to mind when I think of you. And it was 1 Corinthians 10.31, because I can just see that 
uh, whatever you do, you really do seek to glorify God in all things um, because you do a lot. You're a very yes. busy person, um, but you really just seek to put your whole heart into it and serve others and glorify God. Um, and you're just such a strong leader, but you've never felt uh, unapproachable or intimidating. Um, and I think the guests see that as well. You're just so welcoming and friendly. Um, so just so thankful. I've had the opportunity to learn for you from you, but grateful I can call you my friend too. Yes, for sure. It's great. For sure. Okay. Thank you, Erin. Yes. Now we have our other producer, Shannon Hoppy, and she's Shannon. she's not in studio. Unfortunately, she had a conflict today, but she sent us a voice memo. So we'll play that. Hi, Kelly. It's Shannon Hoppy. I am so sorry I'm not able to be there with you in person today, but I did want to send in a little message for you. Um, one of the things that marked me working with you was your ability to put people at ease. I had the tremendous joy of listening to all these podcasts before everybody else got to in the world. And I could just tell from the moment they came on um, that you have this wonderful way of making people feel seen and heard and valued. It's so important in life, I think as women especially, to have that, that quality and you have it. And I noticed that about you. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for continuing to do that. And I will be praying for you in your next adventure. And I hope to see you soon. Bye, Kelly. I love that. Mm. Our longtime listeners may recognize Shannon's voice because she has done some ads for us. And yes. we have we used to refer to her often as our producer and ask her to put things in the show notes. <laughs> so they might remember her. But, she um, has a beautiful voice, yes. Yes, sure. and she's now working on our media team and doing great work there. So we still get to see Shannon uh, doing her job around. She's always, like, uh, wrangling actors and all the things. So that was great. Okay, our next special guest is another person that you may have heard us refer to often on the podcast. It is our longtime editor, Caleb Hoopengarner. <sighs> Uh, I wish up. you'll have to react again when he gets when he can see you. <laughs> Yay, Caleb! <laughs> oh, Caleb, I'm still trying to find you a woman. I've got some prospects here in Oklahoma. So didn't he that. didn't hear any of that. I heard oh, he didn't hear that. <laughs> Caleb, I'm I'm trying to find you a woman. Okay, so <laughs> you need to come to Oklahoma. We got some prospects. Okay, 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 okay. So, Caleb, talk about what you. What you have done with Mark Podcasts, like when you started working with us, how you got this lovely <laughs> role at Lifeway. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I had to actually go back and look at the archives, but um, I started on episode 57. Okay. So it's a long time ago. I joined Lifeway in late 2018, and I think January 2019, I started on the show. Oh, wow. Uh, editing the show. Uh, there was another guy on our team that had been editing before, mm -hmm. but he uh, passed it off to me. Um, so, yeah, I think I stopped episode 220 is now okay. somebody else is now doing the edits for yeah. me. Um, so, yeah, I did, a, I did a few episodes. All right. That's a long time. So you've probably heard our voices more than most people. <laughs> I, would say, I would say that I was very familiar with, uh, with your voices, yes. Yeah. How do you feel <laughs> uh, editing a women's ministry podcast? I didn't prep you for this question. No, you didn't. <laughs> Sorry. I would say that it was both really uh, challenging and really rewarding at the same time uh, because most of the stuff that I listen to is very male dominated, mm -hmm. at least in terms of like uh, tech podcasts and just sermons and stuff like that. So I'm very used to hearing the male voice and uh, producing for that and editing for that. And then being asked to edit a women's podcast where women's voices are just so different. Mm. Um, and that was a very unique challenge to learn just like, okay, how can I make both you and Kelly sound the best that you can? Yeah. And then... <laughs> we speak at very different volumes. <laughs> uh, volumes is one part of it, but just tone and pitch yeah. and all these other things. And then right as I was feeling like I could get used to it, we threw COVID in there. Mm. And it's like, oh, well... 
let's take these two voices and uh, let's take them out of a studio environment and now let's put them in remote recording and having to figure out all <laughs> and of we that. We were so good at it, Kelly. We were so good at it. Oh, Getting all that, all that atmospheric noise out of the way. <laughs> yeah, the trains, the ambulances, the... Uh, <laughs> Just the, uh, just all that stuff. Don't you have a closet you can get into? No, yeah. I don't. I no. don't have a well, walk-in I'm, closet. <laughs> remember poor Laura Magnus when we did hers? I think we did it three times because oh, yeah. like my power went off one time. Your power went. I, it was crazy. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, power, internet, all the stuff that just came with COVID of just like, oh, how do we change something that. You know, we used to have studios in the old building where that's where we recorded all our shows. And then it was suddenly now we have to figure out how to do remote Mm -hmm. uh, recording. And so that was a big challenge. Uh, But to the recording side, like I said, it was just getting better at that craft of just being able to edit uh, female voices better, uh, which helped me in my other parts of my job. But also just being introduced to all of the other guests and speakers and authors that I would never have been exposed to um, outside of the marked podcast i think i mentioned in the the recap episode just i loved editing because it was another opportunity to learn Mm. it was giving me perspective and giving me uh just insights on things that i would never have thought of um either topics that i just wasn't aware of or just didn't have any understanding of or just like hey here's a new perspective and here's uh a female perspective. Here's a, a mother's perspective that just as a guy, you just never experience. Yeah. Um, and so I've learned so much. I say that my, in my job as an editor, um, I learn a lot when I just watch the stuff that we edit, but mm-hmm. then podcast is another extension of that, of just every time you listen to an episode, you're learning something. And it's just, that's one of my favorite parts of my job. Yeah. I love that. You did a very good job on that question. I did not prep you for at all. So way to go. All right, Caleb. So what is a memory, a fun memory or a memory you have of Kelly or how has working on the podcast with Kelly marked you in your walk with Christ? Yeah. So again, I think I'll have to split it into two things like Mm -hmm. Aaron did. And I'm going to sound like I'm repeating Aaron, but it's just (laughs) very true. Um, Kelly's joy and willingness to just do what has been asked of her she goes into every job and every task with a passion that was inspiring. Um, I remember when she was first asked to do the show and mm-hmm. she was like, oh, I'll just, I'll, I'll come on and help out. And then it was like, oh, no, 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 we want you to be a host. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're here with us for every week. <laughs> and she's like, okay. Yeah. Um, and then spawning off of that is kind of the memory of like, I remember her coming to those meetings initially and being like, what do I need to do to mm-hmm. be the best at this? Like, there were so many times that Kelly and I talked about, uh, like, how do I have set up the mic? How do I, you know, talk into it? You know, what do I need to change? She was very willing and uh, open to learning about what it would take to be a good podcaster and how to help uh, the show grow. Um, and the other part of that is, as well is just she has a, a huge passion, and uh, we see that now at the church uh, for women's ministry, and that was just inspiring to see. But also not just women's ministry, but the the ministry of the church at large. Uh, didn't matter if we had a male or a female guest on. Um, she was genuinely uh, interested in what they were doing, loving to see Christ's uh, work being done. And that was just something, again, like listening to her. Uh, I wasn't in every recording, but mm-hmm. having to getting to listen to everything that was was uh, that was said was inspiring from that aspect. Yeah. I love it. Thanks, Caleb. Yes, thank Thanks. you, Caleb. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to say this, too, about Caleb um, real quick. Oh, boy. Some of the favorite <laughs> memories that Elizabeth and I have are actually things that are not recorded. Yes. That, the conversations that we had before or after the podcast. And there was one time Elizabeth and I were just like, that was the best conversation we've had. Like, we just really got to know you. It and was sometimes like an I feel like hour that, after the podcast recorded. Yeah. It was when we were in the building and you were having to come in to help us okay, work yeah. the machine. Well, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so many times it's like, you know, you get you come in to do your job and you just like everyone's doing their job. But I felt like in that moment we just kind of everything kind of I don't know, just the barriers kind of came down and it was like we just got to know you and I kind of see you as a little bit of my son, you know, a lot a lot of that. So um and I was so glad even when, you know, 
you left LifeWay for a short period of time. We still got to contract you. And we that was a comfort to Elizabeth and I because we were just like, we have to have Caleb. Like, he's he's the one that knows how to do this well. So I appreciate you so much. Yeah, that was that was one of the best one of the best things about uh I had an opportunity to to go work for a local church for a little bit and being able to still continue to work on the show was just like this was my weekly sanity check. Like we had a we had a, a weekly meeting and just being able to to talk about the show was like, "Oh yeah, my friends at Lifeway. I remember the I I loved that." Um and yeah, I remember that first conversation where we were talking about like you know, just where we were at stages of life and just, again, like the idea of uh, being more than just coworkers, but being family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that's hugely beneficial about working at a place like Lifeway or at a church is we are coworkers and we're teammates in that, but we're also so much more than that. And so we can take those moments to kind of learn from one another and, minister to one another just by sometimes it's just by listening sometimes it's by trying to find us dates <laughs> sometimes it's other things but it's um yeah i think that's really fun a fun aspect of working together here for sure for yeah. sure well thank you caleb you're welcome thank you okay up next we have some of our more behind the scenes everybody so far has been behind the scenes but next we have jessica yenser who is really behind the scenes. She's like in charge of us all. <laughs> Tell us what you do at Lifeway and what you do with the Marked podcast specifically. So I'm our women's marketing manager, which yes. uh, Elizabeth kind of consolidated into. I'm in charge of everyone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know how true that is, but I am in charge of our marketing efforts for all of our um, women's Bible studies, mm -hmm. our women's events, and then uh, training magazines and devotionals as well. Um, so on the Marked podcast specifically, I have gotten to work with you guys just in brainstorming conversations, um, thinking about scheduling and just what listeners need to be hearing at a given time of year. So I'm a big, I love a good calendaring session. Yes. So that has been so fun for me to get to think about that with y'all. Jessica is very good at calendaring and a spreadsheet and she keeps yes. us focused on what we need to be talking about because our brainstorming meetings can go kind of long and can go down many different winding paths. But Jessica is the one who keeps us on track and is like, we still need a guest for, you know, April 1st. <laughs> so, um, you know what, Jessica, I w I'm going to say I have learned so much from you on spreadsheets and, and trying to be organized that way that now I, I can't think of my life without like – thinking the way you do a little bit. Now, I am not near as good as you, but you have grown me in that area, and I'm very grateful for that. Well, that's so kind, Kelly. Thank you for that. And she and I will say this, too, because lest you think that, that, that she keeps us on track in an unkind way, it is like the kindest way of keeping us on track because we're, we're a lot to wrangle, I feel like, in those meetings. So yeah, but you do it in a very kind way. Rabbit trails can be important, too, right? <laughs> yes. Sometimes we discover some really good things if we don't let ourselves get off track a little bit. Yes. So Yeah, that's right. Sure. Okay, Jessica, how has working with Kelly and working on the podcast marked you in your walk with Christ and or what's a fun memory you have with Kelly? Well, goodness, Kelly and I have gotten to work together on a lot of different projects. Yes. I think probably some of my favorite memories are just getting to travel with you, Kelly, and getting to work the booth and um, <laughs> just having a lot of really great conversations where you were kind enough to just look at me and say, hey, how are you really doing? Um, and just really caring for me as a person. I think that is something that will always stand out to me about you. Um, I think one of the things that I've learned from you um, is just how deeply you care about relationships. Um, you are like the friend that if you're with that person, they run into like eight people they know. Yes. And those are really <laughs> fun people to be around. Yes. Um, we can kind of like follow your, uh, follow your lead there and meet a lot of fun new people that way. Um, but really what I see when I see that happen is just the fruit of a lot of intentionality mm -hmm. that you have had with your relationships. Mm -hmm. um, just your your intention to pour into people. Um, and I think that comes through in the podcast as well. Just mm -hmm. being in those brainstorming conversations and seeing you really think about our listeners and think about women who are leading and what they need to be hearing about um, at different times in the year. And you're just such a great advocate for women in leadership. Um, but yes, I think I will definitely um, always 
strive to care about my relationships the way that you do because I'm I'm seeing the fruit of that in your life. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. I would agree with that. that. It is, it's sometimes a challenge to try to complete a task at a conference with Kelly because people stop her every two feet and want to have conversations, but she's a, she's the best kind of person to do that because she's always like, and this is Elizabeth and this is Jessica and here's what they do. And it's so, you're very generous in your friendships, I think too, which is great. Well, I will never forget uh, the West Coast Forum, Jessica, and sending you to go get balloons for Jen Wilkins' oh, reception. Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> and you were, like, the whole minivan was full of balloons. And I, I, we all felt kind of a little bad about that. We are like, oh, man, we shouldn't. <laughs> Like, we made her do that. Y'all, How did you I, drive with all those? Well, I thought I was getting 75 balloons. Oh. And I thought I could fit them all in a minivan, which mm. is a – like large miscalculation. It's hard to think about how much space a balloon would take up. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, side note, you don't have great visibility <laughs> yeah. in a van full of balloons. So <laughs> another uh, team member kindly uh, volunteered a second van. So oh, that's that how nice. we safely got all the balloons back to yes. the conference. Yeah. I didn't know about that. That's the first time I'm hearing that Yes. Story. If you that's ever amazing. need me to plan a party with 75 balloons, I've got you covered. <laughs> you know, you're going to need two minivans. So all you party right. planners out there. <laughs> It can be done. 75 balloons takes too many vans. Exactly. (laughs) It happened. And no one got hurt in the process. Yes. And I'm sure Jen felt very celebrated with all the 75 of those balloons. I hope so. It was beautiful. Yes. (laughs) It was beautiful. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you, Jessica, for being here today and for all that you do for LifeWay, um, keeping us on track and in line. (laughs) Absolutely. She keeps us on track. All right. Next... We have the person really in charge of all of us, Becky Lloyd. <laughs> she is in charge of us. She is. I can, I can say this right now because she's not on. She doesn't have her headphones on. Yeah, so. she can't hear you yet. <laughs> you, can, you can say whatever you want about me right now because I can't uh-huh. hear you, Kelly. That's right. That's right. Yes. She just said you're in charge. Yes. I just said you really are the one in charge <laughs> for sure. Okay, Becky, tell us. What you do, but then also tell us what, what you did, did do, do back- <laughs> <laughs> what you did do here at Lifeway and how you are involved with the Mark podcast. Yeah, so uh, it's so good to see your face, Kelly. I mm-hmm. have been leading the Lifeway Women team for the last five or six years. Uh, it's been really fun. Uh, I'm sitting here watching and so proud of these, they're young ladies to me, these young ladies who I've seen just develop and um, just grow in their skill and their uh, their leadership. It's been so fun. So I've been able to actually step uh, step into a new role as well and lead uh, lead a strategy team here at Lifeway. So um, it's hard to leave this women's space that I really really love. But one of the things that made me really want to step into this is to be able to advocate for women really at a higher level. Um, than just the resources that we provide, but to make sure that as we're uh, developing resources for the whole church, not just women, that we're really thinking of how are, how are we equipping women? Are we doing the right things? And the women at Lifeway, how can we um, help build their leadership skills? How how can we help them to really uh, succeed at this at this job? And Becky, I think you were at the little like retreat thing that we had where I first said we should have a Lifeway podcast, the Lifeway Women podcast. I do remember that. <laughs> we were at we were at Faith's uh barn. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so Becky's been there from the very beginning. Yes. When Mary Margaret hosted by herself. So uh you were at the genesis of the Mark podcast. I was, and that's really about all because I'm a reluctant I'm reluctant podcaster. Like I do not enjoy this. <laughs> Very much because you never know what's going to come out of my mouth, which is the well, thing that's that why we have editors like bit. Caleb. So, yeah, it's so, glad, glad for Caleb. Yes. So. Well, Becky, what is something that either a fun memory with Kelly or something that has marked you about working with Kelly? Um, it doesn't have to be podcast specific because I know you uh, haven't really worked closely with us, on, even though you are in charge of us. You haven't worked closely with us on the podcast. So what is something that you have with Beck, uh, with Kelly? Well, I will I will just – it's it's really hard to go last because you echo all the other great things that people have said. But 
Uh, Kelly is one of the most high capacity leaders I have ever worked with. Her ability to just, I mean, she's, she has the ability to oversee really broad ranges mm-hmm. of work, but also care deeply about each one of them. And um, just, I so depended on her on in so many, I still depend on her in so <laughs> many ways uh, related to, you know, so relating to uh, SBC, relating to e- even just um, guidance on uh, leadership things uh, related to the church, um, she is just a go-to a go-to person. And um, so, some of the things that I've learned as I've watched her lead, um, she is just like you heard. She's so intentional, and um, you know, leadership really is influence, and all of mm-hmm. us have influence and. In, in one way or the other. And you can use your influence in a lot of different ways. You can use it to build up yourself. That's one way that we see many people in culture use their influence. But the way Christ used his influence, the greatest influencer, was to build up others. And that is also what Kelly does. She uses the influence she has to really build up uh, anybody who she's working with. I've seen her do it as she has led our the training team. I've seen her do it as she has led... Um, our magazine and devotional team, and she is really great at lead. She doesn't only lead. This is the wrong way to think of it. But she doesn't only lead down. She also leads laterally and leads up. Mm-hmm. Um, she has a lot of of influence. You know, one of the things she did for me. I, I said, I say, I'm a reluctant podcaster. I don't like necessarily being up in front, in front of the camera. I'm much more of an introvert um, than that. But Kelly really did challenge me. She didn't. I think I mentioned this on the one on the one podcast I said that I would be a part of, <laughs> uh, but she challenged me to really get out of my comfort zone and uh, to spend time preparing and teaching at one of our events, and um, it was really good for me because it it pushed me in a place where I needed to be pushed, and um, it takes obviously somebody who's willing to tell you you really need to do this. I think you can do it, and to believe in me that I could do it. And so I, she has made a huge difference, you know, in my professional life. But the way that she's intentional and the way that she is using that influence for the benefit not only of others but for the kingdom is really what I've seen over and over in her life. Yeah, oh, that's so sweet, Becky. Thank you. I I, and I'm going to say in regard to that, like when you did, when you have taught for me, whether it was you'd helped me with my doctoral project and you were you championed all that and then also at forum but it was one of the favorites like people will t- still talk about what you taught them and so what you taught was very um helpful it it wasn't just hey i need you to teach a subject it was because you're such an expert at that and you live that and uh your leadership is is just like nobody else's um so i'm i'm so appreciative of your leadership for well, sure. Thank you so much, Kelly. Yeah, and and friendship. Like we, uh, our leadership team as women and women's, uh, we would we have we would have Wednesday morning. We have Wednesday morning staff meeting and a ton of prayer, a ton of just connection, uh, working on working out issues that were going on. Mm-hmm. Kelly has always has been such a vital part of that, and I miss you now that you're. I'm I'm also leaving leaving the group hopefully for somebody new to come in, but I sure do miss your voice and um, your knowledge and your thoughts in that in that space. So. Wow, thank you, I appreciate that. And Becky, you are pretty good at podcasting, oh, so that's good to know. I would just like yeah. to say that I know that you don't like this, but you're good at it. I remember your episode; people were like, "Oh, that was such a good episode." So, see, yeah, maybe. There will be a strategy podcast. <laughs> I'll just have another idea for a podcast, Becky, <laughs> in your presence. Well, we've yes. talked about a leadership podcast, Becky. You need yeah. to, like, yeah. I think we could do, I I shouldn't say this out loud because this is being recording. I think yeah. we could do a leadership. I think it would be great to do a leadership podcast mm-hmm. for women by women. Like, yeah, I love, I, I would love for us to do something like that, but I'm not saying yeah. I'm not saying that we're going to do it. I'm saying that would be a fun thing to do. Stay tuned, listeners. Oh, great. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right. Thank you, Becky. Thanks, Kelly. Bye. Okay. Up next, we have a surprise guest that Kelly has only seen the surprise guest, but now we're about to reveal who the surprise guest is. 
Hello. I kept thinking, I hope it's Mary Margaret. I hope it's Mary Margaret. It's me. (laughs) It's It's me and and the baby. Yeah, we've got two special guests. I know. It's me and a 12-week-old. So, so glad to be here. Yeah, so that voice, if you are not a longtime listener of the Mark Podcast, you may not recognize that's Mary Margaret. She was our first host of Marked and my co-host for a while. And mm-hmm. then Kelly, she passed the baton to Kelly um, when she moved and had babies and all the things. So actually, the first question I want to ask both of you is a little bit different from what I've asked the other guests, but I want to ask about the transitions because you've both made transitions in your ministry life in the past few years. And so what advice would you have for leaders who are leaving a ministry role for something new? I know, Kelly, you like traded ministry roles. Mary Margaret, you've had a couple of different roles since you've left Lifeway. So like, what advice would you give to women who are looking at a transition? Mm. Go for it, Mary Margaret. You know, I think for me, it's like in both instances, when um, the Lord called me and my family, it was just me and my husband at the time to um, leave Nashville, to move to Orlando um, in the fall of 2019, it was just, it was an obedience thing. And, and we just knew that this was what the Lord was calling us to. He, he just opened doors that only the Lord could open and, and made, made a way for us that just, um, you know, I don't have time to go into today, but I was, it was, he made it so clear. It was him that like, I, we had to go and we had to, to leave. And, and I think it was tough because so many people looked at me like I was crazy because I, in some, in a lot of ways, I felt like I was in my dream job and in one that like, I couldn't have even dreamt up for myself and just was loving that. And, um, uh, but I knew the Lord was calling us here for my husband's job. And it was a joy to do that because I knew it was, I knew it was God. And, and I think same went after, um, our son Sam was born two years ago, I went back to work. I was serving as women's ministry director at our church full time and, um, went back to work for four months and was, while I loved the ministry, I was just miserable because I knew the Lord was calling me home and, um, you know, becoming a mom later in life for me. Like, I, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this. I don't know how at 37, I'm going to feel about leaving my job to be home full time. And like, this is the most dressed up I've been for a while. And I still have my house shoes on that y'all can't see. Um, and I don't have spit up on me at the moment. Like, it's just a, such a vast difference of what my days look like. Um, you know, and what my like end of the day wrap up with my husband looks like. He's like, what have you done today? I'm like, well, how many episodes of Donald Duck have you watched? (laughs) You know, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's just a different thing. But again, I remember looking at Jonathan and just saying the Lord, like, if I don't do this, if I don't quit my job, which seemed so scary and like walking off the edge of a cliff to like lose an income. Um, I was like, if, if we don't do this, if I don't quit my job, I know I'm going to be walking in disobedience. And like the Lord had been so clear with me. And so I think for any of you praying about a transition, if you're in a transition, just when you know it's the Lord, go, do, stop, whatever it is he's telling you to do, be obedient to him and don't miss the blessing of what he has on the other side of it because of any fear that you have attached to that. But, but be ready for what it is that he has for you that only he can do. And, um, and that's, it's just a, a constant, um, trusting in the Lord in afterwards, but, uh, but there's such peace and joy when you know that it's him calling you. So like, don't do it for yourself. Don't do it for anybody else, whatever it is. But if you know, it's the Lord, um, trust him and, and obey. Mm -hmm. So good. Kelly, what about you? Yeah, that's so good. I would echo, you know, what Mary Margaret said of just obedience, of just going, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. Okay, now I'm getting emotional. Um, but part, part of that obedience is opening the door for whoever is supposed to be next. Mm-hmm. And so you have to think, okay, if I stayed, then I'm not, um, I'm not giving the next person the opportunity to walk in this, to grow in this, and to be where God wants them to be. And so that is a whole thing of God working ahead of us. And sometimes you just go, I don't even know what this means, Lord. But um, there is a grieving of letting go, but there's also that, um, and I, you know, trying to be like, okay, God, you already know the woman who's going to be doing these next things. And so, wow, like you, you're working in her heart. Um, and that's, that's kind of, that's exciting to kind of see that. And to, and at my age, you, you go, 
I don't want to stand in the way of someone of an of another leader getting to have that opportunity. Um, Chris Adams did that for me, and Mary Margaret did that. Even just you know, I, nowadays Mary Margaret would have been able to have just stayed on the Mark podcast for a lot of reasons, you know. Um, but even when she did, the time of that technology, like we we really weren't there yet. Um, so wow, God's, God's timing is just really good in that. So mm-hmm. noticing that. Yeah, I love hearing that, and I think um, those answers just speak to, like, both obedience, and and I think one thing, Kelly, that you said that I don't think a lot of people think about is not just how it affects you and your walk with Christ, but how it affects the next person, and I think we don't think about that a lot, and so I appreciate how you framed that for us, because I think we can often forget that it's not just us and God, and we're not just, like plays in our own path, though, um, yeah, it's important that we have that obedience, like you were talking about, Mary Margaret, but it's also important to think about the next person and to pass that baton on. Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing that. Well, Mary Margaret, you, I think, only recorded one or two episodes of the Mark podcast with Kelly. Yeah. (laughs) Well, we recorded some since then, since you left. You came back for Uh a couple of episodes. So I would just like to know, though, if you have any fun memories or any ways that Kelly has, working with Kelly, maybe off the podcast, has marked you in your walk with Christ. You know, um, when Kelly first started at Lifeway, our desks were like feet from each other, like a few feet from each other. And so we would just talk all day and be like, Kelly, what do you think about this? Kelly, what do you think? (laughs) Like, you know, we would just like swap ideas back and forth and, um, and just, it was just fun. I think the thing that we both realized in that first year of like literally working side by side is that we're a lot more alike than we are different. And so I, I think our friendship grew, um, in a really good, unique way. Like once my role switched and I think, cause it's like Kelly and I kept wanting to do the same things. And I was like, <laughs> what are you doing? You're stepping on my toes. Like, why, what do you think you're doing? I've been, in, yeah, I've been here for a while. And you know, but then she's like, but this is what I want to do. I'm excited. And I want to like step into these new things. And we, we like to do a lot of the same things. And so then when I stepped into the role as girls ministry specialist, she and I were able to collaborate, brainstorm, talk, because we were in very similar roles doing similar things, um, really help, trying to help church leaders and uh, volunteers as they do their jobs. And so, um, but like Kelly has a way of bringing fun to everything she does. And I remember at first I was like rolling my eyes going, oh my gosh, this is going to be stupid. Like just <laughs> like, she was, I, she, she was like bringing out a beach ball and like had decorations and like just stuff that like I had not done or had, hadn't been used to. And it's just not my hard wiring to think of first, but like Kelly has a way of bringing bringing fun that like intentional fun, but also just fun to anything that she does, which I loved Mm -hmm. as we got to travel together and just to, um, to make so many memories doing events all over the place. Um, and she just, she's also an includer. Like she's always looking around going, come on, come with us. Like, come do Mm -hmm. this. Like, I want you to be a part of what's going on. And, um, and I think one of the most unique thing about things about Kelly, um, when I like hearing what everybody else has said today, um, and then just from my own experience, she is in a unique position where Kelly is a leader of leaders and, and that is a, it's one thing to lead and it's another thing to lead leaders because when you're leading lingers leaders, it's kind of like wrangling cats to some degree, because like they are people who know what they want. They know where they're headed. They, they probably think that maybe they need some help, but don't really want it. Don't really want to ask for it. And, um, and whether that's like internally at Lifeway or externally in other places, I've just watched how you have, just a way about you of leading leaders. That's so unique. But the thing that I know too, because you're my friend is that that's hard. Like that, that can be very hard. It can be very lonely and it can be very, I think just difficult in some moments because you're not always with everybody else because you're the leader, you know? And, and, and my mom said this to me so often growing up, like, because I think I had a lot of like leadership qualities that people wanted to call bossiness, but whatever. (laughs) Um, I like to call myself a natural born leader and, um, you know, but she would say, Mary Margaret leader, Eagle soar alone. And I think that's where I see Kelly so often is that she, she is so intentional with what she does, but I don't think she sees how she kind of flies above 
the group that she's with so often, but it's because of the way that she leads so well that people follow, you know, that she is, she is leading women in such a powerful way. And the mark that she has left on Lifeway Women, which is, you know, so far reaching. Um, and even like I was in, I'm the volunteer women's ministry director at my church and I pulled out her book, Ministry to Women last week in a mm-hmm. meeting. And I was like, let's see what Kelly has to say about this. Yes. And, um, you know, and I, but I've just watched you lead so well in both good things, hard things, like painful things. And, um, you've sought the Lord, you've sought the the wise counsel of others. And then at the end of the day, when you were responsible to lead, you led and you did it with grace and with humility and, um, but always put in the Lord first. And I have so much respect for you for that, um, for having watched those things behind the scenes and, um, just keeping up with you, which I'm so, so grateful for your friendship more than anything. Oh, thank you. So good. Mary, Mary Margaret, definitely. There are, like, we both did kind of a, a leadership thing together. And at the end of it, the person leading it was just like, you guys are really a lot alike. And I'm not sure how how well you <laughs> should be working together in this situation. <laughs> and it was literally that day that I got the call that, that Mary Margaret's name was being, you know, kind of put in front of the student ministry leaders for the girls' ministry. And I was like... This is why. This is why. Yeah. And she was just, yeah, she's she's a leader of leaders too. Yes, she is. Well, this has made me just miss both of y'all so much. Aww. But uh, I wanted to share my, like, one of my favorite memories or how you've marked me um, as I've worked on this podcast with you, Kelly. And it's not going to be anything new or different, really, from what everybody else has said. But I think one of my favorite memories when I was looking back and something that I haven't talked about on the podcast a hundred times, because that's where uh, Caleb was like, I, you have mentioned that story so many times because <laughs> he listens to all of our episodes. But um, So I'm not going to re-mention any of those stories. But I think you talked about this, Kelly, a little bit about staying after the the microphones are turned off and just having conversations. And you did that with me. Um, you do that with some of our guests. And I think you just making no one feel like they're in a hurry, like you're you're not in a hurry to hang up. I remember all the COVID episodes where I lived alone and sometimes you were the only person I talked to in a day. And you would just let, we, sometimes we're like solving world problems and figuring out how it all needs to go. Um, No one's asking our opinion on that, but we had one and we would talk about it. And sometimes it was just silly things. And sometimes it was spiritual things or things we're going through. But I see that in the way that you interviewed people and the way that you talk to them, um, even after the interviews were over. And like Jessica was saying, you have this ability with everyone, um, podcast guests or not, of just hey, you're important and what you're saying matters and I'm not in a rush to stop talking to you. Um, I may have, like there were times when you're like, I have to go to another meeting and it would be like this major meeting where you're like giving a presentation or something. And I was like, oh my gosh, I would not have talked to you for like an hour if I had known that. But you didn't make me feel like you were uh, trying to get me off the phone so that you could go do something else more important than me. And so I think that's what, I will always look back on our time co-hosting the podcast together and think about those interviews, those, but most of all, I think about the conversations we had after the recording Mm -hmm. stopped. And so thank you for always taking that time um, and for the way that you value people. And I think that's something that our listeners can take from this episode too. I hope you all enjoyed the behind the scenes, but I hope more than that, you saw how Kelly has pointed us to Christ these years. And I hope that encourages you to do the same. So Kelly, I feel like I need to have you close out this episode because you're the closer. Oh, yes. I'm the closer. <laughs> yes, we we did decide that fairly early on yes. that Elizabeth did better with the opening and I did better with the closing and I might cry. So yes, yes. but thank you all so much. What a great privilege. Um, what a great privilege to be part of this. Um, thank you both of you um, for all you've done and um, listeners, keep listening to the Mark Podcast. I'm going to listen to the Mark Podcast because I want to hear all the amazing guests and all the things that are coming out. And you will be um, hearing it without me. But come back next week and we'll see you then. Bye. Thanks so much for listening. If you want to join in on the conversation, 
You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Kelly D. King and at E.D. Heineman. Use the hashtag Marked Podcast to connect with us. You can also find Lifeway Women on all social media channels at Lifeway Women. All of today's show notes will be posted at lifewaywomen.com slash podcast. If you love the show, leave an iTunes review. It's a great way for other people to hear about the podcast. We'll see you next time.